Major support for Do the Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Bakersfield West Rotary Stroop Family Foundation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, and the Kern High School District. With additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California. We're here at Douglas J. Miller Elementary School, home of the Mustangs, and we're here to... Well, good afternoon and welcome to Do The Math. I'm Michael. And I'm Mary Lou. And in studio with us right now, we have Alyssa. And Alyssa, if somebody wanted to get a hold of us, what would they need to do? For math homework, help call in Bakersfield 636-4357, toll free 1-866-636-6284. Email dothemath at kern.org. We're online at dothemathonline.net and on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. That was well done. That's a mouthful, isn't it? A lot of stuff to get out there the first time. Why don't you let everybody know where you go to school and what grade you're in? I go to Buena Vista Elementary School, and I am in fifth grade. How's fifth grade going so far? It's really good. What's so good about it? Um, we're doing projects in school, like writing projects. So you like doing that? Yeah. Good, all right. Oh, yeah. How's, how's math going? Really good. Really good? All right. Well, you know what? Because you missed part of your regular class today because you were at another class, and they started something new today, right? Yeah. And what was that? It was multiplying and dividing a whole number by a... By another whole number? Larger number? Fractions? Decimals? Well, here's what we're going to do, because you know what you're going to do a lot of this year? What? Fractions. So we're going to start off with a little bit of a base on fractions right now, right? So why don't you head on over to the board with Mary Lou. We'll talk about just some of the vocabulary, the parts of a fraction, and taking like fractions and adding them first. Okay, you ready? Okay, so we have this fraction. What is that fraction? Ooh. One fifth. One fifth. Do you know what the top number is called on a fraction? It starts with an N. Have you heard it before? It's mm -hmm. called the, I'm going to change our color real quick. It is called our numerator. Have you heard that term before? Yeah. Okay, if that's my numerator, that's my, it starts with a D. D. Duh. Nominator. Hopefully I spelled those correctly. <laughs> you so, are correct. Yes. <laughs> so again, what's the top number? Numerator. And the bottom number is the? Denominator. It's the denominator. The fraction one-fifth means really if, can you draw me a picture what one-fifth looks like? If you have this bar. Perfect. So it means we have one out of five pieces, right? Okay, so we have our numerator, we have our denominator. So our numerator is our part, okay? We call it our part. And our denominator is the? Whole. Very good. See, you knew that already, didn't you? So that's our part and that's our whole, okay? Right. What if we were adding fractions? So if I have one-fifth, Give me another fraction that has five as a denominator. Um, Three-fifths. Three-fifths, okay. So we have one-fifth. We're going to make an equation out of this, plus three-fifths. 
So using my green, okay, you've already shaded in one fifth, haven't you? Well, we're gonna add another three fifths, okay? So if we add another three fifths, let's draw another box that's equivalent. And then I'm gonna break it up into just like you did. Can you shade three fifths for me? So if we have one fifth and we're adding another three fifths, how many, how many do we have shaded total boxes? Four. We have four boxes out of? Five. Five, can you write that for me over here? Can you write the four fifths? There you go. So and that's what's adding fractions. And this is what you're gonna be doing a lot of this year and on into the future. So again, all we're doing is looking, if I have one fifth, I'm adding another three fifths, then we know that it's gonna be four fifths. This is called like denominators because our denominator is exactly the same. same. Look at this. Can you tell me a strategy? Instead of having to use a picture, what do you notice about what's happening with that equation? You just add the top but you don't add the bottom. Exactly, that's it. You just add the top numbers, but we're leaving the bottom numbers the same. The same, because our denominators are the same. Do you want us to go any further with We're gonna one? stop there for a moment, and Perfect. we'll have Alyssa do a little bit more with that in just a few moments. Do remember we have phone tutors available until 5.30 most Tuesdays and Wednesdays throughout the regular school year. Time now for today's Math in the News. <laughs> All right, and today's math in the news, quite literally, taken out of today's sports page. So today's sport, did you read today's sports page in the newspaper? No, well, you know what, I had an opportunity to take a look at it. So, do you like watching sports, or do you participate in any sports? No. No? All right. What about Mary Lou? Oh, yes. What do you have as a favorite? I know running is one of your favorite things yes, to do, but it do you is. have a sport that you like to watch? Soccer or play? and football. Soccer and football. Yes. All right. Well, you know what? It is NBA season. And <laughs> so in the news today, there was a, uh, a story about a pretty famous basketball player, uh, Steph Curry with the Golden State Warriors. Curry hopes to return from broken hand in early spring. So that means he's going to be out for quite a long yes, time. Sir. Now, I saw that and figured, all right, there is some math involved with Steph Curry. So we can see the NBA logo right there. And here's a little trivia question for you. Do you have any idea who this is modeled after? The NBA logo, the person that that is modeled after? Oh, oh, um, it's not Michael Jordan. No, it's, um, before his it's time. It's before his time and he's really, really tall. Yes? Most of them are. Yeah, but <laughs> he's really <laughs> tall. Um, he played, uh, he was associated with the Los Angeles Lakers. Yes, yes, I, I can't think of his name. Um, Kareem? We're gonna, no, is it no, 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 we're gonna give her a clue. New York is on the East Coast, but California is on the West Coast, right? Cherry West. Oh, so that, just a little bit of trivia right that. there, that's who that is modeled after. So, but Steph Curry is one of the more famous NBA players in the league and has been for quite some time. Has won a couple of titles, and I just thought that was a pretty cool, that is a cool photograph, picture. you know what I mean? It's like a couple of them together, but I thought that was pretty cool. So, how are we going to tie this into math? So I found this article in a magazine, and we're just going to look at the bottom of it right now. The combined odds of each of these accomplishments. Now, first of all, the odds of scoring the most points in the NBA is 1 to 476. Right? Okay. If you're 476 players, you're going to score the most. The odds of having the most points is 1 in 476. Okay. So he did that one year. Okay. Wow. The odds of winning two MVP awards in a row is one to 1,904. And he did that winning his second MVP award the same year he had the most points in the NBA. Okay. Impressive. Now we take a look at the next one. The odds of having a 50-40-90 season, that's based on points, assists, rebounds, things like that. So the odds of having that are one in 1,254. So all of these happened 
the same time. In the same year. Right. He had so a now, really good year. <laughs> let's take a look at this. The odds of all of that happening in the same season, one in 136,505,216. The odds of that happening all at once, and it happened wow. for him. And there are a lot of other statistics and uh, infographics and things like that uh, based on Steph Curry. But I figured, all right, now let's take and apply a little math to this, how you find the odds, all right? So, probability and odds and odds and probability. So, an example. So, this is perfect that Alyssa is going to be working on this today. So, the probability is 5 out of 13. So, we know 5 would be the outcome that you want and 13 are the total. That's the whole number of outcomes. So, we can take 13 minus 5 are the unfavorable outcomes because 5 are the favorable mm -hmm. out of the 13. So, the odds are 5 to 8 that something will happen. Five good, eight not good. All right, everybody good? Yes. <laughs> okay, so now we'll go odds probability. So if somebody says the odds are nine to 21, you wanna know what the probability is. Well, you have nine to 21, so you know there are 30 total outcomes because we have nine good, 21 bad, right? right. Total number of outcomes is 30. The ones you want are nine out of 30. You can simplify that to become three out of 10, which is 30%, that is the probability. Yeah. And that is today's Math in the News. I just found that astounding. That is really cool. All of the things that Steph Curry was able to accomplish in one season and the odds of it happening. Yeah. And there were things, uh, I think there's one more on here. Uh, well, th there's a lot, but where he shoots the three-pointers from, because he shoots a lot of three-pointers. probably is consistent with that. It, but he's a lot farther back than where a lot of other NBA players shoot their free throw, or three-pointers from. But anyway, Power. that's today's Math in the News. Now you know a little bit about basketball and probability and odds, huh? You ready to do some more work? Yeah. All right, so let's head back over to the board. So the first one you had up there was one-fifth plus three-fifths, and oh. you knew that with the common denominator, you had four-fifths, okay? So now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go on. Now you can decide, do you want to keep the one-fifth or the three-fifths? Which, which fraction which do you, you want like to hold keep? on to? The three-fifths? The three-fifths? Okay. All right. So make some more room. So we're going to have three-fifths. Right, three-fifths. Now what I'd like you to do is add to that one-tenth. Now you and Mary Lou go ahead and figure out what you're going to do with that. Okay, so remember your strategy over here? You said, well, all you do is what? You add the numerator, but you don't change the denominator. Right, and is our denominators the same here? Yes. Yes, it is. But here, is our denominators the same? Yeah. No, so we can't add our numerators just yet because we need the denominators exactly the same. The same. Okay, so I'm going to show you a picture. And this time, again, I'm trying to think, oh, we have 10. So let's see how we're going to do this. Break this into five, just like you did. And how many do you need to shade? Three. Okay. So over here, I'm now going to break this box not into fives, but into tens. Into tens. So let's see if I can get this. How many lines do I need? Nine. I'm going to have to go up, eight, and do I have ten boxes? Count. It's gonna work. Did I get ten? Yeah. I got ten here. How many are we going to shade? One. Okay, shade one. Oh. Okay. So, here we have five, we have ten here, okay? 
What we can do is this. Does five go into 10? Yes. It does, doesn't it? Yes. So how can I make this an equivalent fraction to make this out of 10? Multiply it by two. Very good, I have to multiply it by two. So if we're multiplying this by two, am I multiplying both numerator and denominator by two? Yes. Okay, yeah, because what I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top. To the top. So what's your new fraction? Let's put this right here. Three-fifths, and we're timesing by two, and timesing by two. What does that equal? Six-tenths, okay. We need to break that into six-tenths, don't we? So we're gonna take this three-fifths, and we're gonna break into six-tenths, but our box is kind of small, okay? So what we you could do is you could just draw a line right across the middle of it. Can we draw, the, oh, there we go. Boom. Do we have 10 pieces now? Yes. We do. So how many boxes are shaded? Six. Yep, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. six. So here we have six tenths, and we're adding another? One tenth. One tenth. What's our final answer? Seven tenths. There you go. Nicely so, done. So a little bit of work right there yeah. on the getting the denominators the same when you have two of them different and how you can go from the 5 to the 10. We'll continue yes. to work a little bit more with that with Alyssa right here. But first, we have an opportunity to head on out to Miller and check in with the Mustangs. Hey, we are here at Douglas J. Miller Elementary School, and we're here at the home of the Mustangs. These Mustangs are ready to do some math. So we have everyone prepared with a whiteboard. We got everybody with a pen. We got everybody with an eraser and they're ready to go. Show me how to do this problem. We were talking a little bit earlier about how to multiply and divide some big numbers. And so let's see if, the, if that paid off. 75.4, and I want you to multiply this times 1,000. 75.4 times 1,000. Show me what you got on that one. We got a crew over here. See if we can explain this. Trinity, what's going on here? How'd you do this problem? You showed us the way how to move the decimal over how many times was in 100, which is two zeros. Oh, gotcha, yeah, so 100. Now, what was, it? did the problem have 100 in it or did it have 1,000 in it? Oh, 1,000. It had 1,000 in it, didn't it? It's important to know how many that's zeros there are. Yeah, that's it. People around you agree? Yes. Andrew, do you agree with this one? Yeah. Okay, so what's your final answer after you get done with this whole thing here? So, um, 75.4 times 1,000. Mm -hmm. um, I just moved the decimal from here three times, so one, two, three. And right here it was blank, so you need to add two zeros. And then you got 754,000. Oh, try again. We'll put the comma right there. Yeah. You got the right number, just gotta make sure that comma's in the right place, right? I really like how you said this. Now, see if you can answer me this question. Think about it before you answer, okay? We were multiplying times 1,000, which has three zeros. But the answer you got only has two zeros, right, Raylene? It only has two. Why is that? Why do we multiply times 1,000 with three zeros, but the answer only has two? Nicholas, you have an answer about that? Well, how, why is that the case? I like it. You did it the long way, right? You worked it all out, and you still got the same answer we did. So I like the fact that you kind of proved you can either do it a fast way by moving the decimal, or you can do it the long way. Right? I'll even throw a, a comma in there for you. But why are we multiplying times 1,000 with three zeros, and your answer only has two? Well, because the, you multiply the, the four, and then you go straight, and then you add a zero. Mm -hmm. And then the next one with zero, you add two zeros. And then the next zero, I had three zeros, yeah. and then I and I added, but then the four was there at the end on the first one, and then it gave it gave me that answer. So you had some space holders there too, huh? But then at the end, I, there's a decimal right there. So what that is, you, the decimal behind it is the four. So the decimal is by moving back one space. So this one, I put it moved back to one here. It is, yeah. I like the way with this with this longer way of multiplying. That's exactly right. You had three zeros. You had them but you had to move this decimal back one place because of the decimal on the problem. Good, ex good explanation, I like it. Who did it the way where you had to move the decimal over, okay, and we wanna know why you only have two zeros? Over here. What do you think, how come we only have two zeros? 
It's because when we multiplied it by a thousand, yeah. there's three zeros. And there are three zeros, right. And the decimal was at was at the you know, it between was the at the second right? it was at the yeah, between the five and the four. Right. But then we moved it once and that took up one space and it was after the four at that. So then we had to move it twice more, which we had to put two zeros. I like how you explained that. That's excellent. Yeah, you had to go past the four first and then two more spaces, and there's your three zeros. That's you moved it three times, right? That's it, exactly. All right, if you want to erase that part, I want you to do at least one more, because this is good times. You can't get away from the fun we're having here. Um, interesting problem that we have here is 0 0.27. Oops, we're not gonna multiply this time. This time I want you to go the other direction. Divide this one by 100. See what happens there, 0 0.27 divided by 100 and we will see if we can hang out with this crew over here. Jack, what do you got, man? Where's your final answer? I got, um, haven't done it yet. Okay, so 0 0.27. He's moving it, all right. Okay. Some, all right, can uh, we go okay. the long way too? Zero, zero. Point. Where's that decimal? Where's the actual decimal in the problem? There it is, we're gonna make it nice point and big. I'm glad you took it away, zero. yeah. Point zero zero twenty seven. Gotcha. And how'd you know how to move the decimal two times? Because whenever you multiply, you move the decimal two times or three times or one time to the to the right. To the right. Uh huh. But whenever you move to the des, whenever you do divide. Yeah. You move the move decimal the two left. times That's to exactly the left. It. And Brianna, how many times did you have to move it? Twice. How do you know? because um, there's two zeros in 100. Brilliant, I love it. We have so much more to do. We're looking forward to do some more, but I know there's also some more problems to do back in the studio. So we'll head back there, soon to return to the home of the Mustangs. All right, thanks for that, Scott. We will return there shortly. 636-4357 is the phone number. We do have phone tutors available until 5.30. In studio, we have Alyssa, a fifth grade student from Buena Vista. How long have you been a bulldog? Um. Since second grade. Since second grade. So you're pretty comfortable at Buena Vista? Yeah. All right. You're pretty comfortable in here right now? Yeah. All right, good. Back over the board. Let's have you do some more work. So this time, I will let you come up with the whole fraction. So numerator and denominator, you come up with any fraction you like. Three-sevenths plus... Let's see, uh, you are in fifth grade, so we'll go five over six. So now, this is a little different, the next step from what you were just working on. Okay, so we have different denominators, right? So let's go back to this real quick. You knew that five times two equals 10, ten okay? And we took that and we multiplied numerator and denominator to come up with six over 10, right? We also saw that we have five, three out of five here. We broke it into 10, right? And it also equals six out of 10, the same way. But here, does seven go into six? No. Does six go into seven? No. No. So what do you think we're gonna need to think about here? Um, multiply seven and six. <gasps> Let's try that. What is seven times six? 42. 42, okay. So you know your denominator has to be what number? 42. 42. So what are we going to do to change each of these fractions so they both have a denominator of 42? What do you think you're gonna need to do? Multiply three by six and seven by five. Why three by six? Because you multiply seven by six and you have to do the same thing that you did to the denominator. Very good, go for it. And what did you multiply five by? Seven. Okay, so what's your next step? You have to add. Okay. Do you need to do some space over here? So walk me through this, what you're adding. So I'm adding 18 and 35 together to get... ...53. And then... 
Where does that 53 go then? So we have an answer of 53 out of 42. 42. So here's my question. Your numerator is now larger than your denominator. Do you know what that means when your numerator is larger than your denominator? Um. If I had 42 out of 42, what does that equal? One. Yeah, that equals one whole, correct? Yes. Because I have 42 pieces out of 42 equals one whole. But my numerator is larger than my denominator, so does that mean I have less than one or greater than one? Greater than one. I have greater than one. That means I have more than one. Do you know how to turn this to what's called a mixed number? Because this right now is called an improper fraction. It's improper because the numerator is larger than the denominator. denominator. So what we want to do, we can take this, this is correct, but we also want to turn it to a mixed number. The fraction bar, do you know it also means divide? Yes. You, oh, I knew you knew that. So this really means 53 divided by 42. 42. So if we have to divide, do you think you could divide? Or yeah. Okay, which one goes in the house? 53. Got it. And then 42 goes outside. Yeah. 40, oh, we're going to change 42. that to a 2. So how many 42s go into 53? 1. Okay. Oh, there you go. 42 times 1 is 42. When you subtract that, you get 11. And we want a remainder here. We don't want to keep going with decimals. We want that remainder. So how many complete times do we have? One. Put a one for me, a big one. What's my leftover? What's my remainder? 11. And that's actually my new numerator. So let's put 11 as our new numerator. And my denominator is exactly the same. same. So we have, again, we need to change and find a common denominator, right? Yes. Add them up. And then if it's an improper fraction, we're going to divide those numbers to make it a mixed Number. number. You rocked it. Good job. Now, how can she be positive that that mixed number is actually the same as the improper fraction? Do, do you know how to reverse it? You multiply 42 by 1, and you get 42, and then you add it to 11, and you get 53. Boom. There you go. All right. Nicely done right there, Alyssa. Great work. And for doing some great work right there, you've got a meal of your choice, courtesy of our friends at Grillin Burger. So congratulations on that. Hopefully you have an opportunity to head on over there and uh, say hi to Lydia. If you go to Grillin Burger, say, hi, Lydia. I'm Alyssa. I was on Do the Math. She'll know because you'll have the certificate, and she'll fix up a great meal for you. Sound good? Yeah. All right. Hey, we'll be back with more right after this. Today we're at Kernville Elementary School, home of the Mountaineers, and we're here to... All right, back at Kernville Elementary School, some fourth and fifth grade students, and we've been doing some adding and then proving why seven is a lucky number right? Uh, but now we're going to do a little multiplying. You guys all know how to multiply, right? Yes. Yeah. You guys have all heard of two times two is four, two times three is six, right? You did all the multiplication tables, five right, times five, twenty-five squared numbers and things like that, all right? This is going to be a little different. So go ahead and take a look at the paper you've got, all right? So it says shape times shape. Now we see that we have a square times a square times a square is going to equal a half circle. That doesn't make much sense right now, does it? Nope. But we know that the squares are all the same. So that means the number that a square represents must be the same. So try this, okay? If I went two times two is what? Four. Four times two Six. is eight, right? Because I'm going four times two is eight. You guys got the idea so far? Mm -hmm. yeah. So if I say on my paper, that a square is equal to two, then what does a half circle have to be? Eight. Eight. Okay, now I'm gonna test it. 
Okay. If a half circle is eight, what does that half circle have to be? Eight. Eight. It has to be eight. Everybody with me? Because four plus four equals eight, so it can't be a full circle, it has to be a half circle, because that, right? Could be. We'll find out, all right? Now, we know that a square is equal to what? Two. 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 So if I say this is two and that's eight, what does that oval have to be? Six. Two times what is eight? Four. So we're going to say an oval is what? Four. So on my paper, I'm going to draw an oval, and I'm going to put four. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. Okay, so what I want you to do is on your papers, because you have a little bit of space on your paper down at the bottom, right? And we can go ahead and we can start like I did, right? So draw a little square. Draw a symbol for a square. And you're going to put that a square is equal to two. Do we all agree with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, we're all good with that. We also said that this little half circle, right, when we go two times two is four times two is eight. So we all agree that the half circle is eight. Right, so that satisfies this first equation. Even though there are no numbers, we appointed numbers to those different figures. We know that the half circle is eight. We know the circle is two, so two times four. four. So we know the little oval is four. All right, so you can make an oval and put equals four. All right, so now here's what we're going to do. We're going to see how far you can get, okay, because we've done these so far, okay. So now you want to look and test it, okay, because the way we started, does it mean that it's already correct? It works so far, right? But does it mean it's perfectly correct? No. It may not be, right? We can only know if we keep testing. I think I know what the circle is. You think? Yeah. What do you think? 16. Well, I want you guys to go ahead and try them, okay? On your paper, just see if you can kind of start figuring out what the other shapes are equal to. All right, you can work together, you can work individually, however you want to work on this, all right? So go ahead and give it a try. Anybody have an idea on some of the other shapes, what they might be? Because this is really, you try and think a lot about how, what can you do to make these work. I think the square could be two, because two times whatever that is can't be that same number again, whatever that is, unless it's a zero. Could we have a zero? Yes. Is zero a number? Yes. It could work, right? But when you multiply anything by zero, well, take a look at the one he was talking about, right? Because if we go two times zero, what is that going to equal? Zero. Zero. So that would work, right? Here's what I want you to do. Take the blue rectangle and make it a three. If the blue rectangle is three, what is a red circle worth? 12. 12. 12. You guys all get it? Yeah. All right, there you go. Learning, this is the first step to algebra. Instead of taking shapes, you're going to be taking letters that are going to represent numbers. A little bit more math with the students at Kernville Elementary School. students to work with at Kernville Elementary School right there. We have Alyssa in studio with us, a fifth grader from Buena Vista. Right now we have another opportunity to head on out to visit the Mustangs of Miller Elementary School. Hey, we are back here at Miller Elementary School, home of the Mustangs, and we are interested in doing a little bit more math on these whiteboards because this crew that we have today, whew, super solid. 
Here's what we're gonna do today, crew. The next part that I really think that is kind of a fun way to do it, we, we saw some uh, shortcuts with multiplying and dividing by really big numbers that end in zero, okay? The other part is sometimes we can bring in English into math, right? We can bring in reading into math. So for instance, I wrote this problem here on the board. The sum of 32 and 147, you are going to translate this problem. This problem is written in English. It's written in words, almost like a sentence. I need you to translate this problem into math, okay? Do the best that you can, and then come up with an answer, of course. But I'm gonna ask you, hopefully in a moment, to explain to me how you knew what to do. I know that earlier we got a chance to look at this table, and we got a chance to look over here. Chad, how'd you know how to do this problem, man? Because um, the sum The is, sum? Uh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. sum means what? The, uh, the answer. Okay. Yeah, it does mean the answer. The answer to what kind of problem, though? The math problem. It is a math problem. Specifically, give me an operation. What does sum refer Addition. to? Addition. There you go. That's the important part, right? 147 and 32 and Good. got 179. Okay. Gotcha. Any commas necessary here? No. No? Anybody else get anything different that they want to go ahead and, and show me that is different than what happened there? The sum is the important word there, right? Okay. So you can keep the numbers on your board. Keep the exact same numbers that you have there, okay? And all I want you to do is we're gonna change that word sum, S-U-M, to the word difference, okay? And so the sentence would read, we wanna know about the difference between 32 and 147. Now I'm really interested to see what you will do because there could be more than one answer to this problem. Hmm. Brooklyn, what do you got? Um, I did 147 minus 32 equals 115. So how'd you know minus? Because difference is equivalent to subtraction. Difference is subtraction. There you go. So you did 147 and 32, and you got 115. Anybody else get something different than 115? Oh, we have consensus here. And I noticed that most people, when we did the sum, put the bigger number on the top and the smaller number on the bottom. Look at our sentence again on the board, okay? And on the board it says, we wanna know the difference of 32 and 147, right? If you put those in the exact order that it's written, wouldn't 32 be on top? 32 and 147. So write down this problem real quick, all right? If you need to, next to it, you can leave what you have or you can erase it. 32 on top, 147 on the bottom, so the problem now is 32 minus 147. What in the world are you gonna do with that? Here's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. I want you to talk with your group because maybe this is a problem you haven't seen before. Maybe you wanna talk about it a little bit and see if you can come up with an answer. What's gonna happen? Is it the same answer it was before? Or is it gonna be different? My guess is maybe different. So talk about it with people around you before you come up with an answer. Just about 30 seconds. Because um, 32's on top, be different because it won't have three digits. Okay. Um. Take about ten more seconds. Think about it a little bit. If you were given a problem that said difference in it, first of all, it seems like we all know it's gonna be a subtraction problem. Mm -hmm. Great job, okay? And if the problem was written like I've written here on the board, the difference between 32 and 147, you'd have 119 like you had before. However, if you translated this directly, right? In other words, if it said 32 minus 147, and you put the 32 on top and 147 on the bottom, tell me what kind of answers that we have come up with that may be different than what we had before, okay? Uh, okay, what do we have here? Um, Ooh, interesting. I like it. Uh, so this was the addition problem. Mm -hmm. This was the subtraction problem. And now we're changing things up a little bit. Over here we have 85. Wow. How'd you come up with 85? Because um, you minus two, um, you can't minus two from seven, so uh, you have to borrow. Yeah, so you borrowed, so yeah. 12 minus seven equals five. And then you can't borrow from, uh, you can't minus three from four, so you, need, you have to borrow again. Mm -hmm. And then um, you can't do 13 because you've already done it 
more than one time. So it's 12 and then minus four and I got eight. Got the eight, gotcha. And it looks like you tried to borrow from down here because it wasn't anything to borrow there, huh? This is why this problem ends up being really interesting, I think, ends up being an interesting problem. Okay, what about over here? Oh, you still have 115. Tell us about that one. How'd you get 115 still? Because I did it a different way. Instead, I didn't borrow, so I got 115. Okay, you still got 115, all right. And over here, Jack got 115, but he put a negative in front of it. Why'd because, you put a negative in front of it? Because usually whenever you have this, it's usually a negative. And Why? Plus, uh, because... <laughs> <laughs> These are tough questions, aren't they? I, I can't really explain it. But 32 minus 147 probably is lower than zero, which is... Ah, it's lower than zero. So, That's kind of a good idea. But so let's talk about that a little bit. And when we come back, we'll be able to have, figure out which of these three, maybe even some more answers, which of them is actually the correct solution of this problem. The thinking is going on. The wheels are turning. And we know there's some more to do back in the studio. So we'll head there. But back to see what the official answer is when we return. All right, thanks for that, Scott. Right now in studio, we have Alyssa. And Alyssa was working on some fractions earlier. And you feel pretty good with those, right? Yeah. So in fifth grade, you're going to do a lot of fractions, decimals, and percents. And you said that you're kind of familiar with decimals right now, right? Yeah. And you're multiplying and dividing them, or just one or the other? Both. Both. All right. Well, what would you like to do first, multiply or divide decimals? Divide decimals. Divide decimals? All right. Hot shot over to the board, and let's see what you've got. Do you want to come up with the problem? No. You want Mary Lou to come up with one? Yeah. All right. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Okay, so are you dividing decimal by decimal or decimal by whole number? Decimal by whole number. Decimal by whole number. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, there you go. So walk me through what you're going to do. So first you have to rewrite it, and then 3 can go into 6 two times. So you put 2 right there, and then you multiply 3 times 2, and you get 6. And then you subtract, and you get 0. And then you bring the 4 down. 3 can go into 4 one time. So you multiply 3 times 1, which is 3. And then you subtract, and you get 1. And so you bring the 2 down, and then 3 times. 3 goes into 12 four times, so 3 times 4 is 12, and then you subtract, and then your remainder is 0, but you still have to put the decimal. Thank you. That's what I was waiting for, the decimal. Now, why don't we move the decimal? Why does it stay put? Because if you move it, then you'll have a completely different yeah. answer. And it also stays put because you're dividing by a whole number. Okay. Can you you ready to see when you have to move the decimal? Yeah. Okay. There we go. So let me let me think. Let me think. Um, so, do you think that we are going to be dividing the same way that you just did? Actually, we are. There's only one step that we need to add. With decimals, this is our dividend. This is our divisor. Okay. When we're dividing, our divisor always needs to be a whole number. How can I make that a whole number? What do I need to multiply this by to make it a whole number? Five. Not by five, to make it a whole 25. number. Actually, did you do the powers of ten yet? Think that. Think powers of 10. So it's going to be 10 to the what power to make it a whole number? How many times am I going to move that decimal over to make it a whole number? One. So I'm really multiplying this just by 10, right? If I multiply this by 10, am I going to get 2? Yes. Yeah, right? Yeah. Because we're moving the decimal over 1. What I do to the divisor, I have to do to the dividend. dividend. So if I multiply this by 10, what's my new decimal? Now are you ready to divide? Yes. 
there you go. See, dividing with a decimal as your divisor, you just have one more step. Are you still dividing now exactly how you did? Yes. Okay, go for it, solve it. So first you have to rewrite 2 goes into 7 3 times, 2 times 3 is 6, then you subtract and you get 1, bring the 4 down, 2 goes into 14 7 times, 2 times 7 is 14, you subtract and then you get 0, and then you bring the 6 down, and then 2 goes into 6 3 times, 2 times 3 is 6, subtract and you get 0, so you have a range of 0 zero and you still need your decimal. Okay, so we want to make sure we come up with the exact same answer, right? Yes. So over here, I want you to double check your work and I'd like you to multiply three, 37 and 3 tenths, right? Yes. Multiply it by 2 and tell me what happens. Okay, so we ended up with the 74 and 6 tenths. Yes? Nicely done. There you go. All right, I've got another problem for you to work on. Has nothing to do with oh. fractions or decimals. So, okay. Alyssa, have you ever, ever heard of the order of operations? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> that was a little... Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Mary Lou, write the problem on the board. Okay. We have 5 plus 5. Oh, no. Divided by 5. Oh, no. Plus 5 <laughs> times 5 minus 5. Uh, all of the operations with the 5s. There we go. You ready? Okay, yes. order of operations, PEMDAS, right? Yes. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally why we don't know. But are there any parentheses? No. Can you create your own parentheses? Yes. Yes. The E means exponents. Are there any exponents? No. No. Is there multiplying or dividing? Multiplying and dividing. Okay. Remember, it's whatever comes first. first. So, what's coming first? Dividing or multiplying? Multiplying. Uh oh, oh, look again. Dividing. Dividing. Can you put parentheses around that? Yes. Can we do this? Is there a rule that says we can't do that? No. No, we can't. So is there multiplying? Yes. Okay. So let's take care of those first. Okay, rewrite it for me now. What do we have left? There you go. Okay, so now we're at adding and subtracting. Do we always add before we subtract? Or is it the same rule as multiplying and dividing? Same rule. Okay. So we're going to go from left to... Right. So... Plus one is six. Plus 25 minus five. Are we going to go 25 minus five? Or are we going to go six plus 25? It'll still work. It will still work? Mm -hmm. Okay. Go for it. That's 20. And then when you add that, you get 26. There you go. All right, hot shot. <laughs> erase the correct answer that you've gotten down at the bottom. So erase those two lines that you did. Where, these right here? Yeah. So erase the whole two lines. Everything that she's done so far, just get rid of it all. Oh, okay. All this down here. Right. Leave the original problem up there. All right. And then do you want me to take... Get rid of the parentheses. Okay. You erase yours. So I'm going to give you two minutes, Alyssa. What I'd like you to do is I would like you to show us how somebody could have come up with 30 instead of 26 <laughs> for that answer. What do you think? How did they come up with 30? So you can just write 30 off on the side so you remember that's what you're supposed to get. But you've got two minutes to tell us how they got 30. Okay. What do you think? Where's the mistake? If they came up with 30, they made a mistake somewhere. So where do you think they made a mistake first? Maybe they just like started adding like, like doing the equation like that. Okay, so. So 5 plus 5 is 10 divided by 5. Okay. 
and then plus five. Wait. Uh, you're yeah, right. it's easier you're right just there. to you're rewrite right. it if so that's what you want to do. What's ten divided by five? Two. Okay. Now you're going to bring down your plus five. Plus five. And we're at times five. Times five. Minus five. Minus five. Okay. So two plus twenty-five minus five. Okay. I'm going to take that off right there. Okay. So what's two plus five? Seven. I mean, I'm sorry. Two plus twenty-five. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. But 27 minus 5, does that get us 30? No. No. So leave okay. your line before that. So we're going to... So that first line, 2 plus 5 times 5 minus 5 is fine. Okay. So this is fine. Um, so keep doing what you were doing, just going it. in order. So let's think this way. If we do, what's 2 plus 5? 7. 2 plus 5 is 7. 7 times 5 minus 5. What does that come out to be? 30. What? 30. There you go. Boom. Because there's going to be times when you have problems like that, and 30 will be an answer, and that's how some students may come up with it, yes. by just going all the way straight across with that. So nicely done. Congratulations. You've got yourself a couple of tickets to the go see the Bakersfield Condors. So we hope you have an opportunity to go enjoy that. And we do have one more opportunity to head on out to Miller Elementary and visit with the Mustangs. Hey, we're back here. Thanks again for uh, drawing it back here to the home of the Mustangs here at Miller Elementary. We had some discussion last time about, hmm, not quite sure what the answer is, not quite sure what the sign is. So we talked a little bit about that during our time away from the studio. And we came up with this problem here, and I think that through working this problem, we can probably figure out and have a picture of what's going on. This problem is positive 46 minus 89. And without a lot of knowledge of positive negative numbers, I know that this crew can do it. Show me what's going on here. I want to see a picture. I'm going to come around the side here because I know that we've seen some amazing things from this side. I want to come down here to this crew. We have a picture of what's going on. We do need a number answer. Okay. JC, what's going on, man? What do you got? So I... Oops. So for the positive, I put like a C, and for a positive, it goes up. So I put the I put the um, the pointers up, mm -hmm. and I put that as 46. And Good. then for negative, I put it down, and I put it as 89. Right. And some of those things are going to cancel out, right? So we have a great picture going on there. Let's see if we can do some math with it. Who's got some math that can show us with a picture and what's going on here? Really? No? I love your picture, though. I love what you're looking at. Show us this part, even though you don't have an answer, okay? You got 46 minus 89, and this is the exact problem that we want to do, right? This is the exact problem that we want to do. But we got to figure out how we're going to do this problem because you can't start borrowing. There's not enough, not enough numbers, right? Now, tell me one more thing. You have a number over here that says 43. Why do you have this 43 here? I love that. This is a, no, it's a wonderful answer to have, a no, number to have. But where did it come from? You do 89 minus 46 because... Because you switched it around to do the way you could do it. Yeah, great idea. It's I like it. It's going to be... Wonderful. Hold on to that idea, okay? Hold on. Don't erase that because that's a wonderful job. Anybody else get something? Like, oh, Angel. I don't have a picture from you, but I have some wonderful numbers. Tell me a little bit about how you came about doing this problem here. So, um, since 46 can go into, can't go into 89, mm -hmm. I flipped it over and subtracted that. Okay. And since, like, it couldn't, it needed to go to, like, the negative numbers. Yeah. So I, um, I put 89 on top and 46 on the bottom. And then my answer, I put a negative on it. So I got a negative in the front of it because that bigger number was negative, huh? Who's got a picture of negative 43? Over here. So we have 89, we got 46. I see you trying to do some borrowing there. We definitely have a negative here, and we want to work on these numbers here. I like what you did here, but it is so hard to subtract a bigger number from a smaller number, right? So I really like what you did, the, the effort here. We definitely know it's negative. We definitely know it's underneath the water, but I think we're gonna go back here to negative 43. We're gonna go up a little bit and all the way down to 43. This is a good picture of what's going on here, negative 43. I like it. And in these groups, it's such a wonderful opportunity for you to see what's going on around you and see what's going on. Negative 43 is what we're shooting for, right? And the picture 
goes up 46 and then from there all the way back down 89 and so if you started in the middle you're definitely going to be in the negative part so make sure you have a negative in front of it all right we're going to change gear just a little bit because i know that some of you want to do some algebra a couple of you said that maybe you've done some algebra before and a couple of you said you maybe you haven't so we'll do a couple of really simple algebra problems okay and instead of using some letters to throw people off if you haven't seen algebra before here's all it means okay triangle what some number is going to go in this triangle i don't know what it is but if you add to that triangle 31 your final answer okay some number in the world that we don't know plus 31 your final answer is 100 okay we want to know what goes in that triangle now, there's probably about 17 ways for you to explain this to me and i want you to use one of them so show me on your board but explain to me how you came about it how do you know what to do there what, what's going on there Looks like it's an addition problem like we did before, but I have a tendency to think that maybe some of you are going to use something other than addition. Giselle, what do you got going on here? I'm subtracting 100 from 31. You are subtracting. Now, why in the world are you subtracting when this says triangle plus 31? Because if I subtract 100 from 31, I'll get my answer. Because you're looking for the pieces missing, right? Yeah, I like it. Okay, keep going. Don't let me throw you off too much. I'm going to swing back around over here. I know Jack always has something going on. Jack, tell us what happened here. Okay, so I got 31 and the triangle equals 69. Why? How do you know that? Because I I tried to solve this and I'm like, well, if I do that. Oh, you did a little that? bit of trial and error. That's a so wonderful I, idea. So um, I did this, which would add to that. So I'm like, okay, oh. so six, that would be nine plus one or what a great idea, a little trial and error. That's a good way to start some algebra. Anybody else have a different way of going on here? What's, what else happened here? How'd this number come about? I like it. Where'd it come from, JC? So I was doing mental math and I thought, uh, and I, I was thinking of doing 70, but I, but that would be 700, I mean, that would be 101. Mm -hmm. So I thought using 69 because you because six, cause six plus three equals nine, then nine plus one equals 10, and then put that with the nine and then you get 100. That's it, there you go. So no matter where you are in your path towards algebra, and it's coming, whether you're excited or not, you might as well be excited because it's coming. No matter where you are in your path, I can see that you have some skills to be successful. A couple skills that you're gonna need are some trial and error that I've seen all right, already, right? Some translation between words to numbers, and also to be able to communicate with the people around you to see, hey, this is what I got, what do you got, which one do you think is right? Do some error analysis to be able to figure out who's right and who's wrong. So much good stuff going on here. We know there's more stuff going on in the studio. We want to go ahead and say thank you to this crew here for allowing us to come and join them here at uh, Miller Elementary. But right now, back to the studio. I know there's more work to do there as well. All right, thanks for that, Scott. And thank you to the students over at Miller Elementary and their ACES after school program. We do have phone tutors available until 5.30, most Tuesdays and Wednesdays throughout the regular school year. In studio, we would also like to thank Alyssa, a fifth grade student from Buena Vista, worked on fractions today, decimals, and order of operations. You ready to do some more? Yeah. Oh, well, maybe you can another time because we're just about out of time. Did you have fun today? Yeah. All right, very good. That's exactly what we want. And until we meet again, continue to do the math. support for Do The Math has been provided by Chevron, the Kern County Superintendent of Schools, Edison International, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, California Resources Corporation, Bakersfield West Rotary Stroop Family Foundation, Panama Buena Vista Union School District, Bakersfield City School District, and the Kern High School District with additional production assistance provided by these supporters of education in Kern County and throughout the state of California.